Now that we're across the basic implementation of pixel streaming, I'd like to go over another element of the pixel streaming infrastructure, the Matchmaker Server. The Matchmaker Server is a wonderful feature that allows you to automatically connect waiting peers to available signaling servers that have actively connected streamers. What this means is that rather than having all of your peers connect to the exact same stream and application, you can have multiple stacks of signaling servers and applications available, and the matchmaker will automatically redirect people to available ones. This means that in real time, as peers disconnect from their experiences and that server becomes available, the matchmaker will connect a new peer to that one. This page you can see here on the official UE docs provides a lot of helpful information. I'll link this in the description below, but let's go in and show an active demonstration to better understand how it works. Seeing as we've just finished setting up our handy dandy AWS instance, we'll use this to demonstrate the matchmaker. As you can see here, I've navigated to the infrastructure on the instance that we had in our application, and we're just going to go ahead to the matchmaker. So matchmaker, platform scripts, command, and we're going to run the setup. This should only take a mere moment. Beautiful. With that set up, we'll just run the run script. Beautiful. Okay, you can see here that it's listening on port 90 and 9999, and it's just going to sit there doing that for a while. Let's head over to our signaling server, and we'll set up a connection to that. All right, now we head back to web servers, signaling web server, platform scripts, command, now we will be using the start signaling server script again, but we need to add a few launch args for it to connect to the matchmaker. In order to do that, we'll open a PowerShell window here. Note, this is unrelated to pixel streaming, but a helpful tip, if you press Alt, F, S, and R, you can open PowerShell as administrator in that directory. I use it all the time. Now, this is a very simple launch arg. We'll go with, so we're running the start signaling server script, and then all we add is, Use matchmaker equals true. So if we run that, the signaling server will start, and you'll see here, Sir is connected to matchmaker. And here in the matchmaker window, we can see that it's got a connection there. So they're both connected to each other, and everything is fine. Now that these are connected together, let's run the application and see what happens. Go back to our application. Run the shortcut again, because we set that up earlier. And you can see here, streamer connected. And up here, Sirius server ready for use. Now that that signaling server has a connected streamer, it's ready to redirect peers to that server. To explain what's going on here, normally, peers by default connect to the HTTP port 80, which is the default value for this port. However, if we wanted people to use our matchmaker instead, we would redirect them to port 90, which would then automatically connect them to any available other HTTP ports, in this case, 80. Let's demonstrate this now. So we'll head back to our local machine. We've got a browser here, and we'll navigate to our URL with port 90. Now you'll notice it got rid of port 90. What that means is the matchmaker has just redirected us to the available signaling server on port 80. So if we click, there you go. We're now connected to the application. That might not look like much, but if we open another tab and do it again, connect back to the matchmaker, all one zero servers are in use. Because that existing signaling server has a connected peer, it can't connect us to that one. So by using the matchmaker, we can sit here in queue and wait for another available server. So we'll leave this signaling server running and this matchmaker window. We'll head back to our signaling server directory. And open another PowerShell window. In order for this to work, we need to change a few of the ports on the second signaling server, as you can't have multiple using the same ports. So you can see here, I've used the use matchmaker command, and we've changed the SFU port, HTTP port, and the streamer port. Now we aren't using the SFU, but the signaling servers will still clash as they're both using those ports currently. So let's have a look over here. We've changed SFU to 8989, HTTP to 81, and streamer to 8899. And the defaults on the previous, we can see here, streamer 8888, 8889, and 80 instead of 81. Great. So with that set, let's start this one. And if all is well, beautiful. So that's connected and available and available on the matchmaker now as well. All we need to do now is set up another application. So if we go back to our project, 
Now we will need to make a slight modification to the launch args on the pixel streaming project. Before, you might remember the pixel streaming URL command, which ends in 127.0.0.1 and 8888, which is the streamer port. We need to use the new streamer port of 8899. So we'll just save that and run it again. And if all's well, this should connect here. Beautiful. Now with that connected, we can go back to our URL. And look at that. It's already detected that there's a new instance available and connected us. Beautiful. So you see here, we're on connected to port 81. This is a simple demonstration of the matchmaker, but it shows you that you can run multiple signaling servers and streamers and automatically connect peers to them as they become available. It's an extremely helpful tool, but there are means to expand upon the matchmaker on your own. I'll link to the matchmaker section on the pixel streaming infrastructure in the description below so you can look at this further.